Hi, this is Janakira. This presentation is about a walkthrough of the Windows Azure benefits that come along with the Microsoft BizSpark membership. So what exactly is Microsoft BizSpark? It's a global program to help software startups succeed by providing access to the software development tools and by connecting them to the key industry players and helping them gain marketing visibility. One of the key benefits of BizSpark is the access to Visual Studio Ultimate with MSDN subscription. This is going to help the startups gain access to the Microsoft operating systems, platforms, development tools, databases, and cloud services. So when I say cloud services, I actually mean Microsoft Windows Azure. So what exactly is Microsoft Windows Azure? Windows Azure is Microsoft's cloud platform that offers infrastructure and platform services in the form of compute, storage, databases, and application services. So this helps startups build various cloud applications and deploy their applications on the Windows Azure platform. But why do startups need Windows Azure? Well, Windows Azure brings self-service where you can just swipe your credit card and get started with your deployments and architecture. It's pay by use. You only pay for what you consume and you only pay for the resources that you use. It's elastic. It can automatically grow and shrink based on your application needs. And Windows Azure is programmable, which will let you automate your deployments and maintenance through the API. Finally, Windows Azure, the cloud platform, offers a choice of operating systems, databases, languages, and tools. So let's take a closer look at the monthly benefits that Bispark brings for Windows Azure customers. First, there is 1500 hours of compute, then 45 GB of storage, 35 GB of CDN, five database units of SQL database, 35 GB of outbound data transfer, and unlimited inbound data transfer, which is free for the inbound traffic, and 128 MB of cache. That's a lot of resources. But let me put this in a perspective. So what does it really mean? When it comes to compute, you can run four extra small instances or two small instances. So that's going to be your compute service. Then the database is delivered through five SQL databases that can go up to one GB in size. 45 GB of storage that is shared among the virtual machines and the static content with the support of 100 million IO transactions. That's quite a bit of IO. 128 MB of memcache compliant in-memory cache to leverage the in-memory caching capabilities of the cloud platform. 35 GB of static content delivered through 20 plus edge locations that Microsoft has across the globe. And this actually translates to a saving of USD 3600 per year. For startups, this is definitely a big deal because you absolutely need the building block services and the core infrastructure when you are getting started and when you are just incubating your product. So what exactly can you deploy? Let me take a different perspective here. If you are a Linux shop and if you are looking at deploying a simple two-tier LAMP application, you can deploy your web server, maybe running an Apache web server in one small Linux VM. You can deploy your MySQL database in another small Linux VM. So that takes care of your compute requirement. And you can also leverage the memcache protocol, a memcache protocol support that comes with Windows Azure cache and you can go up to 128 MB with that. You can store static content on Azure blob storage and you can go up to 45 GB per month. And of course, you can also deliver the static content or streaming content across the Azure CDN network, which can go up to 35 GB per month. So this is a pretty decent setup and any startup which is looking at going live with a minimum viable product with a simple two-tier application can quickly go live on Windows Azure. Not only you have a simple web server and a database, you also have a memcache, you also have CDN capability, and you are leveraging the static content available through Azure Blobs. Now let's take a look at a 
typical ASP.NET application deployment architecture. You would want to package your web application into a small web role. Your business logic or your app server would get packaged into a worker role, a small worker role. Your database can be deployed into a SQL database, maybe running a web edition. And of course, you can also consume up to 45 GB of Azure blob storage or even queues or tables and tap into the content delivery that's available uh, across multiple edge locations. So again, irrespective of whether you are a Linux shop or a Microsoft shop, Windows Azure does offer you the platform capabilities to quickly go live. So let me show you a quick demo of accessing your Windows Azure subscription that comes with the Bispark offer. So we get started by visiting Microsoft.com slash Bispark which is going to be a one-stop shop to learn everything about Microsoft Bispark and its benefits. Once you are on this page, click on Offers, which will take you to another page that has a list of various benefits that you have access to. Assuming that you have signed up for Bispark and your application has been approved, clicking on Learn More of the Windows Azure section here takes you to another page where you'll find various resources related to Windows Azure. Just click on Activate Windows Azure Now button here on this page, which will then walk you through a standard process of signing up. In my case, I've already activated my Windows Azure subscription that came with my Bispark membership. So I cannot go any further, but from here, it's a standard way of signing up with Windows Azure. Well, that was a quick demo. And now I want to leave you with a few tips which are absolutely critical when you go live on Windows Azure from your Bispark offer. Please do understand that the stopped VMs attract charges. So once you are done with your test and, and dev requirements, go ahead and delete your cloud services and virtual machines to avoid getting charged. If you are using virtual machines, uh, you also need to delete the disks and the containers and the blob storage associated with the VMs to avoid incurring storage charges. When you are signing up for Windows Azure through Bispark, there is a spending limit of $0 imposed on your account. What it really means is the moment you actually meet the threshold, your VMs get disabled and your account gets suspended. Now that's not a good thing for a startup which has gone live with their production application. So a word of caution. If you are deploying your production application on Windows Azure that comes with your Bispark offer, first thing, go ahead and remove the spending limit. Don't deploy a production application with a spending limit on. That's going to be very difficult and will cause unwanted situations at a later point. So make sure that you are removing the spending limit the moment you deploy a production application. So that was a quick presentation on Microsoft Bispark and the benefits of Windows Azure that come along. A couple of resources, Microsoft.com slash Bispark, as you have seen, is going to be a one-stop shop to sign up and to access the benefits. WindowsAzure.com is a, a great website to get started uh, if you are new to Windows Azure or if you want access to various resources. So I hope you found something new in this presentation and thanks for watching it. Uh, this is Janaki Ram signing off.